at halftime, I think I had uh, posted that we didn't see anything new. There was not anything new, I think, on the field, except this and this one thing. The U.S. won. And I, I, I'm not saying that, you know, to be a jerk. I'm saying that because Mauricio Pochettino, the new head coach, has made it very, very clear that he is going to take a much more pragmatic approach to this team. And so while this is not a game that is going to be put into a time capsule, and there are plenty of things to poke and to, I think, fairly criticize when it comes to the performance tonight, ultimately, it resulted in a win. And I've said time and time again, this is all leading up to 2026. And when it comes to me, you, or anybody else out there for that matter, when it comes to American fans or just Americans in general that will tune in to watch this team, the only thing that matters is this team wins. And if this team gets in the habit of winning by whichever way they see fit, could be beautiful, and that's in the eye of the beholder, or it could be ugly, it doesn't matter unless they win. It also has to be said that this is not a good team in Panama, notwithstanding what happened over the summer. But for Pochettino and for this group, ultimately, just point up to the scoreboard, 2-0, certainly things that they can get better on, certainly things that they will work on. And you know, when it came to firing Greg Berhalter and all, it, it was a result of the team not winning. It wasn't the result of the team not playing well or not being romantic or not being expansive or progressive or whatever word you want to throw in there. It was ultimately about wins. So Pochettino was one and oh. Um, as I said, love to hear from everybody out there. And this is an instant reaction. And sometimes our reaction in the cold, harsh light of day is different. And so maybe we'll get up tomorrow and see things a little differently. But it's also fun to see what people's instant and oftentimes visceral reaction is to this, especially given the, the circumstances being Pochettino's first game uh, and all. Well, when it comes to this uh, lineup, if you'd like to talk about the lineup, uh, fair enough. If you want to talk about what you saw or what you didn't see or how it relates to 2026, certainly we can get into uh, get into all of that. Goals from Pepe. Uh, Pepe, who came on as a substitute. Nice to see him. He put it through the goalkeeper's legs after taking a shot, by the way, to the face right when he came on the field. And uh, Musa, who actually spent most of the game playing out wide uh, in the wing position at halftime. I had posted that I, I don't think that Musa is a winger. Uh, even scoring the goal. I don't think that that is his best position. And certainly he pales in comparison to someone like Weya or or even for that matter, there were very different players, but uh, a, a Gio Reyna who sometimes takes up a wide, uh, wide position. So I don't think that's necessarily where he is best. But it was, in, I guess, interesting and maybe therefore something different that we saw, that we saw tonight. Matt, uh, Matt Turner, the incumbent, uh, and maybe given the benefit of the doubt, given what he has done, but certainly right now in a precarious position with others testing him, and I think rightly so, had a big save, um, and I think did well despite the fact that he is not playing and really in kind of a, a difficult situation now when it comes to uh, the club game. I think Pochettino, I'm sure he, in his post-game remarks, will be positive in terms of the win, but certainly this is the step and only the first step in what he feels, I'm sure, is a, a process towards 2026. I did say in my uh, halftime uh, tweet that 2026 is all that matters. I only say that in that Pochettino is not going to get fired, okay? Even if, even if all hell were to break loose and the U.S. next summer in their only real competition that they have, which is the Gold Cup, if they were to get their ass kicked... Uh, this is for 26. This is what's going to happen in the next year and a half. It's going to be Pochettino. And therefore, whatever happens, yeah, we will scream and yell about it and we will talk about it. But the reality is that if this team is horrible under Pochettino, I don't think it's going to be, but if it were to be horrible and then that whistle blew in the summer of 2026 and they did things that we had never seen before, that's all anybody's going to remember. That's all anybody is going to care about because there is no qualifying, because there are no, not going to be big, big games. Although the next game, it should be said, in this window, down in Guadalajara against Mexico, that's a whole nother level. And we'll see how many changes he ultimately makes. So I, I do think that 
uh, Weston McKinney, I mean, look, he's proven time and time again that you certainly can't write him off. I, I think it was I think it was tactical and I'm not talking about tactical on the on the actual field. I'm talking about tactical from Pochettino to kind of send this message that in this game, no, Weston, you're not where we need you to be in order to start this game. Now, look, he might he might very well start down in Mexico, and I have no doubt that going forward that Weston, even if he is in a doghouse situation, which I don't think he is, but even if he is, we've already seen that he has a way to work himself uh, work himself out and to make himself valuable. And I think Pochettino will, uh, will recognize that. And, and, you know, I think that that's important. But it also, the message that it sent that, you know, there are no sacred cows. You can, you know, everybody is vulnerable. And so you better bring it each and every time. But I don't think that anybody stepped in tonight and showed that they are better, uh, a, a better option than Weston McKinney. So, um, so I, you know, I don't know what Pochettino's reasoning ultimately was when it comes to, uh, to something, someone like that, when it comes to, again, when it comes to Pepe, um, <laughs> I, I just, he's good. I don't know necessarily think that he is, he is great. And when it comes to the pecking order right now, you know, it's still unfortunate that it's that's Balogun. Um, it's Balogun at top because still even that is just not good enough yet. The back the back line is interesting. I'm still not sold on Chris Richards, and I know he's not in this camp, but he will certainly play a part. But I just, it, you know, and, and again, when it comes to Tim Ream, if, if you actually believe that Tim Ream is going to start for you in 2026, then I'm okay with what's going on. If not, I don't want to see him on the field. I don't think he should be taking minutes away from anybody. I don't you know, the, uh, the, 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 the pairing or whatever. No, I would rather see somebody else that truly you believe has the opportunity to take that spot, even in the next year and a half. And, and it doesn't mean they're not gonna make mistakes, but in that next year and a half. So when it comes to 2026, when we just talked about, it's the most important that that person ultimately is better. He might not be better now, but if he is better than what Tim Ream is going to be a year and a half from now in the world cup, then that's who I want to see uh, on the field. You know, the uh, the death situation is going to be interesting if and when he comes back and what he ultimately looks like. And, you know, Scally is a very poor man's type of uh, uh, Dest and, and not a not not even close to the same replacement. Again, we've talked about Robinson pushing up top. Uh, other Robinson Miles, we'll, we'll see if he makes his way back in. But there is still a a problem when it comes, I think, to the defense, in particular the center back position and who they are. And it, it, it gets scarier and scarier that the closer we get to 2026, we don't have a better understanding of who those who those two, at least those two, if we're going to play a back four, are going to be.